Welcome to the Summer Institute of Church Music. My name is Chris Dawes, and for 17 years I have had the honor of serving on the Institute's Board of Directors. Founded in 1970, the Summer Institute of Church Music, or SICCM as we sometimes call it, is a gathering of church musicians, organists, choir leaders, and singers to celebrate, learn, connect, and be inspired. Sikkim has met at Trafalgar Castle School in Whitby, Ontario, about half an hour's drive east of downtown Toronto, for 52 years. But because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we haven't been there for two. And we're not there tonight. By tradition, Institute Week concludes with a concert given by its faculty and students at St. George's Anglican Church in nearby Oshawa. And that's where we're going to start with audio captured eight years ago in that beautiful church. This will be Canadian composer Eleanor Daly's setting of words from Psalm 100, O Be Joyful in the Lord. And the conductor of the SICM Chorale that year was Dr. Hilary Apfelstadt, who is again choral instructor this year at SICM's 2021 Online Institute, and who will join me in a minute. The images you'll see are from a more recent SICM Chorale performance in 2019, our 50th anniversary. After our opening choral performance, our 2021 organ instructor, Dr. Matthew Larkin, who will be featured on the, this concert as organ recitalist, will begin his offerings. Dance by Canadian composer Kola Obalabi, recorded recently at Toronto's St. James Cathedral, and Prelude from Pièce de Fantaisie, by French composer Louis Vierne, recorded at Notre Dame Basilica in Ottawa.
Welcome, Hillary, and thanks for serving as choral instructor in this crazy 52nd session of Canada's Summer Institute of Church Music. A few minutes ago, we heard you conducting at the closing concert of our 44th session in 2013. But what are we going to be hearing tonight since we don't have a church or, for that matter, a choir during the pandemic? Well, we have kind of a pastiche of lots of different recordings of things, but it was conceived as a program. You know, we had that hope that we would be live, but I planned it in a way as if it would work in that sense. And the, the original plan was to have a whole series of pieces that really um, comprise music that gives hope, reinforcing the role that faith plays in difficult and, and challenging times. But as I was working on this year's program, I, I began to think we needed to acknowledge more, not only the desolation that came with the pandemic and how we've dealt with that, but also the um, tremendous emphasis there's been on diversity initiatives, especially this last year. Um, as you know, I live in the States now, and the, the death of George Floyd about a year ago was a catalyst for so much activity. Um, throughout the country and then in particular in the music groups in American Choral Directors for Association, Association for example. But the, the amount of racial injustice, the, the social ills, the ADEI, accessibility, diversity, equality and in inclusion, all of those things are very much at the forefront of everything that's been going on. And in music we have underrepresented composers music by women, people of color. I wanted to honor that theme of hope, but to be more inclusive in this repertoire than I was in my original plan. So that kind of stretched my parameters a little bit. Oh, well, that's great. Certainly that is a culture that we contact in our churches a lot now too. <laughs> so it's great to have that echoed in the program that we're going to be hearing. Good. Well, um, when SICM meets regularly in person, you rehearse a choir of about 70 people from Sunday to Wednesday and then give this concert on Thursday. How have you spent your week this unusual year? Well, it was quite different. Um, of course, we had the daytime sessions that all revolved around the theme of leadership, which was the broader theme for Sikkim this year. But I remember talking to you and to Gord Adams, um, some other members of the board early on when we were planning and thinking about maybe we would think we would consider, well, what goes on in the the head and the hands, <clears throat> excuse me, of the conductor when you're planning a program like that. So what I did was to spend some time um, talking about how we choose repertoire, because I think that's something that every church musician wrestles with all the time. How do we choose it? Where do we find it? We, we spent some time um, thinking about what do we look for in a score? Um, how do we figure out how to conduct it? You know, what are the signals in communication? It's not just verbal, it's gestural as well. Um, so it was taking people through using these musical examples at times of that whole process of how we, we think and what would we do in a rehearsal situation. I hope there was some practical information there. I did a session on warm-ups, which I think even for the singers who would come, that might be something that they could do at home, for example, some of those practical warm-ups, because we know we're all out of shape vocally after a year like we've had. And one of the things that we have to do as our choirs come back is to rebuild those voices. So that was a part of it as well. Okay, well, we're going to get uh, straight to some more music. Could I ask you to introduce the two choral pieces we'll be sharing next? And in both cases, tell us a bit about what we'll see as well as what we'll hear. All right. The first one of this set is Rao Dilworth's Arrangement of Courage, My Soul. And I chose it because of the strength of the text and the thematic connection, as well as its genesis in hymnody. And it's expressed by a Black composer or arranger. The text talks about when the storm passes over, we'll see a brighter future on that shining shore. Just as we are beginning, I think, to see a brighter future coming out of the pandemic as more of us get vaccinated. And looking to that future gives the writer hope. He speaks about being free from storms, safe within the veil, and the promise in that language is very comforting to people. 
of faith. The video I think is really wonderful. It honors the health workers who have been at the center of this health storm we've had and have invested so much of their own time and their energy and skill in just simply trying to keep people um, to make them better if they're sick already and keep them from getting ill. So it's really very moving. I felt as when I was watching and listening, I thought it was such a good integration. Um, and that was your, your doing, Chris, so I have to give you credit for that. But I, I think it's really particularly appropriate at this time. And then that follows with a piece um, which is called Through Love to Light, which is by American composer Elaine Hagenberg. She's one of the most prominent female voices writing in the United States right now. And again, her text fit the theme well. Her music is so singable technically that I thought it might be something that some of our choir directors would find they could use in their planning for the upcoming year. The text is by Richard Watson Gilder. It's part of A New Day, which is a very long extended poem in song and sonnets, just wonderful text. And Elaine chose the coda of it or the very ending, just six lines. And it's called The After Song. And she titled the piece from that coda, Through Love to Light. I think that the text talking about moving from darkness to the perfect day through love to light, through light to God, who art the love of love and the eternal light of light. The language is really quite musical and the setting is very lyrical. I have a personal connection with this because I actually attended the premiere, which is what we're going to watch. I had the privilege of introducing this choir and Elaine herself played for the group. And so... She was backstage beforehand, you know, getting herself all organized to go in. She's such a wonderful pianist. And as you watch these young singers, their high school students, look at the engagement in their bodies. They were so excited to be there. They were really invested in the text. But the honor to have the composer as your collaborative pianist was just like the icing on the cake. And I remember them coming off stage afterwards just beaming about having had that experience and the audience was so receptive to this. So both of these pieces support the idea of hope moving from light to the love of God and as we come out of the darkness of the pandemic we're moving into that light by the grace of God. Wonderful. Well after we hear those two compositions we'll hear again from our organ instructor Matthew Larkin. His own arrangement of Les Barricades Mysterieuses a harpsichord piece by French 18th century composer François Couperin, which Matthew recorded for us at our usual concert venue, St. George's Anglican Church in Oshawa. Following that, one of the beautiful psalm preludes of English composer Herbert Howells, number two from set two, which he recorded for us at St. James Anglican Church in Dundas, Ontario. Howells based all of his psalm preludes on short passages of scripture. This one he based on verse 12 of Psalm 139, and this kind of ties in with uh, the theme you were describing. Mm -hmm. The darkness is not darkness with thee, but the light is as clear as the day. The darkness and the light to thee are both alike. Storm is high. 
Joining me again is Dr. Hilary Apfelstadt, Choral Instructor for SICM Online 2021. And Hilary, it was an interesting exercise, wasn't it? Planning a choral concert with no performance? But in choosing music, we considered many factors, including your teaching throughout Institute Week and also following themes of creation and change. You know, Chris, our field has so long been wed to Western art music canon. It's the way we were all brought up. And there's such a wealth of material there, including this Haydn. But in our love of tradition, perhaps I should speak just only for myself, I have not always made room for other voices. And as the world becomes more aware of our failings, we need to be intentional about righting some of our wrongs. We can't undo the past, but I think we can improve the present and the future. We can do better. Maya Angelou said, when you know better, do better. And we know better now. So we need to be intentional. The Haydn represents the traditional art music canon and the wonderful language, both in the text and the music from the creation expresses a timeless theme. The Lord created the earth. He looks at what he has done and he sees that it is good. And when I think about this, I think of some other settings, Aaron Copeland in the beginning, which is such a marvelous setting around that same text theme and our own Ruth Watson Henderson's wonderful setting of uh, James Weldon Jones poem, which is written from the perspective of a black composer. It's a black version of creation, if you will. Now that piece is 14 minutes. So I knew it wasn't very practical to pick it for this. But the Haydn is in miniature saying the same thing that both of those more extended works um, say. And the Haydn, as performed by the Tabernacle Choir and Orchestra, is really a very majestic presentation. And I'm so glad we included it because I don't want us to lose sight of some of these wonderful traditions. Absolutely. Well, that's how we're going to start this uh, second choral set, from the idea of God's perfect unspoiled creation. But we're then quickly going to admit that we have done much damage to the earth and its peoples. We give our students a chance usually to sing something like the Haydn as part of our closing concert, uh, but because at the very time that Haydn was composing this beautiful music. European culture, however, was occupied with conquest and even genocide in the New World. To refer to this, we drew on James Green's arrangement of the Cherokee hymn, Guide Me As I Walk Along, which was sung by expelled Christian Cherokee people, even as they were forcibly marched, many of them perishing from their ancestral lands in southeastern states to Oklahoma. Hilary, you've already touched on this theme, but uh, you've really been there at the heart of the choral world's recent grappling with the challenges of history and diversity, both in academia and in with the ACDA. What is the current thinking on this and how does it inform your work as a performer and educator? I think, Chris, that I have really expanded my view of repertoire tremendously. I, I was always I think, very conscious of, of including Canadian repertoire. You would know that from having worked with me in Macmillan Singers and also trying to champion women composers. So in that sense, I was looking at a minoritized group, but I was not as good about finding music from other cultures. And that's something that now when I'm looking to plan programs for guest conducting, I'm, I'm more conscious of that. And just in the readings I've done this year, I've become um, much more attuned to, to what's going on in this country, because as I say, I'm living in the States and, and there are just there are horrible things here, just as I read in Canada about the finding of all those unmarked graves of the children, the residential schools, you know, in the States, racism is so much about the black, but in Canada, we've got that terrible history with uh, the Indian children. And then I, I was reading about the Trail of Tears, how these people were taken from the southeast and just forcibly moved, as you said, marched 5,000 miles across the country and taken out of their element and then tried they were remade in a way. That's what we were trying to do. We were trying to, to colonize them. And I think, you know, the, the horrendous um, 
thought behind that is is really horrifying to me and i so appreciate james green is himself he has a grandparent who is black and he has a grandparent who is cherokee so he weds these two things together and i was able to speak to him about this and he he told me that the dialect we're hearing in this recording is the one that's used in georgia north carolina and tennessee which is where they would have come from originally but there's another one that's used in oklahoma which is where many of them ended up and the text is very repetitive and there are some learning resources to make it easier. I hope people aren't afraid of it because it's Cherokee, because there is repetition in it. But choosing this was part of my effort to be more aware of BIPOC composers. Um, and, and also the hope that people used music as they were in these awful situations, oftentimes for them the light that they saw just as with the blacks was singing music that gave them hope music of their faith and so forth so using that guide me O thou great jehovah as the kind of anchor of this if you think about what that text means you're following god god will lead you out of the darkness um i felt as if it was a, a good complement to the program in in many respects not only because of the social justice elements but the fact that you know, in our culture, many of the people who come to Sikkim are people who are in very traditional congregations. And these hymns have great meaning for them, as they do for me, having grown up in the United Church of Canada. So um, I'm hopeful that, that this will speak to people. And your wonderful Smithsonian Institute film is uh, very gripping. As you hear the music and you see the path that was followed, especially the part where you see the map that's carried out through 5,000 miles. It's astounding. And how they had to retrace steps sometimes. You know, what they went through is very humbling for somebody like me who has, has never had that kind of um, bias or prejudice delivered at me. I have, I realized, lived a very privileged life. But I, I can't ignore that other people have not in my music making. Right. That's wonderful words, uh, Hillary. And it's important that more and more of these uh, matters come to the front of our mind. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll now hear Achieved is the Glorious Work, the magnificent chorus from Franz Josef Haydn's The Creation, performed by the Mormon, Mormon Tabernacle Choir and Orchestra. And Guide Me As I Walk Along, the Cherokee hymn we were discussing, arranged by James Green, who is Cherokee American. The performance we'll hear of that piece is by the National Lutheran Choir, and we're grateful to the Smithsonian Institute's Aerial America for the temporary use of its footage of the beautiful Appalachian Mountains and the Cherokee Nation capital of New Echota in uh, Georgia, which following the removal of the Cherokee people in the 1830s is now a historic site. Following this, two more selections from our SICM Online 2021 organ instructor, Matthew Larkin, both recorded at St. James Cathedral in Toronto. We'll hear 20th century French composer Olivier Messiaen's Les Langues de Feu, or The Tongues of Fire, from his Pentecost Mass, and Canadian composer Paul Halley's Toccata Fantasia on Nicaea. <laughs>
The churches we serve, like the one I'm sitting in, have been empty for many months. But for the Institute, life goes on. For a decade and a half now, every second year, the Summer Institute of Church Music has identified a prominent Canadian who has given deeply to church music in our country to become a fellow of the Summer Institute of Church Music. As part of this, a Canadian composer is approached to honor the individual by means of a new anthem or other sacred choral work to be performed in the presence of the honoree by the SICM Chorale at its public choral concert at the close of annual Institute Week in Whitby. With great pleasure, in 2021, the Board of Directors has named Rupert Lang the seventh such fellow of the Summer Institute of Church Music. And the new anthem given in his tribute is Psalm 84 by none other than composer Matthew Larkin, whose skills at the organ we've been enjoying in this concert. Both Rupert and Matthew will enjoy me in a moment, but first a few words about our honoree. Rupert hails from Red Deer, Alberta. He took his BMAS in organ performance at the University of Manitoba and went on to study at the Royal School of Church Music and to receive his MA in music from University of Cambridge, St. John's College, studying with George Guest, Gillian Weir, and John Scott. Returning to Canada, he became director of music at West Vancouver United Church, where he founded the Vancouver Children's Choir. And since 1986, he has been organist and director of music at Christ Church Cathedral, Vancouver. Rupert is a prolific composer of choral and liturgical music known around the globe, and in a moment he'll be joining me along with Matthew, who has written the new anthem, Psalm 84, in his honor. I'm going to apologize in advance for the familiar Zoom jerkiness and occasional noise you'll hear in our conversation. But first, we're going to share Rupert's own composition, We Sing a Love of Music, with text by Herbert O'Driscoll.
That was We Sing a Love of Music by Rupert Lang. And welcome, Rupert Lang and Matthew Larkin. And without further delay, Rupert, it gives me great pleasure to confer upon you the seventh fellowship of Canada's Summer Institute of Church Music. Although, actually, I'm just going to show you this lovely certificate uh, because I'm in Georgetown and you're in Vancouver. So uh, we'll arrange to get this to you or even keep it for you because you'll be joining us in Whitby as choral instructor for our 53rd session. The certificate reads as follows. Canada's Summer Institute of Church Music admits hereby Rupert Lang to the Office of Honorary Fellow in recognition of a career dedicated to the songs and souls of the church in Canada and for a legacy in performance, ministry, and teaching from which God's work and song in this country have benefited richly. Witnessed this eighth day of July, 2021. Uh, it's indeed uh, an honor and privilege to be the recipient of this uh, the SICM award. Um, and I was told uh, just a, a little while ago um, in, about confirming the award, of course, but also um, Chris uh, mentioned the fact that uh, Matthew had composed a, a brand new piece in honor of this, uh, this wonderful occasion and based on Psalm 84. And when I heard that, uh, I was, I just got really emotional, almost fell off my chair. So I, I just, um, that's part of my thanks. And I'm looking forward to, I haven't heard it yet. And I know that uh, many choir members were involved in the making of this, including my, some of my cathedral choir members. So that pleased me enormously. And uh, yes, indeed, I really look forward to hearing this piece. And Matthew, thank you so much. Serendipity has allowed SICM to have Dr. Matthew Larkin serving as our organ instructor and organ recitalist. And not only is Matthew a fine composer, the two of you were frequent <laughs> colleagues in the 80s and 90s. Matthew, I wonder if you could tell us a bit about Rupert, about the piece, and the unusual way we're going to hear it this evening. For sure, and thank you very much. Uh, I'm firstly, very humbled and flattered to have been asked to contribute this work uh, for the Summer Institute and in Rupert's honor. It's brought me out of a kind of compositional hibernation, which on a personal note, I really uh, appreciate. Uh, and it was great to get to work in that regard again. And about 32 or so years ago, I, I moved to British Columbia uh, where I lived for seven years. Uh, and at that time, uh, Rupert had just, I, I think you'd been at, at Christ Church for three or four years at that stage, Rupert. And, and um, we very quickly found that, you know, I knew a lot of the people that, that knew Rupert and had worked with him and, and spoke uh, so very highly of uh, his ministry and the work that he was doing at the cathedral in Vancouver, which was a very special place for me because some years before I'd had the opportunity to take organ lessons with Rupert's predecessor, uh, the late Patrick Wed there while I was still in high school. And I'd met some people in the cathedral community and um, my first reaction at that time was that, boy, that the church is a really lively place on the West Coast. And it was fun to move out there and be part of that and to make Rupert's acquaintance. And, and the cathedral continued to be, for me, a kind of place of pilgrimage. I remember it, remember being at the Even Song for your 10th anniversary, Rupert, and um, showing up with uh, Moira Morgan and Bryn Nixon. And, uh, and, and what a fantastic occasion that was. And, and over the years, we've had the opportunity to to hang out and get acquainted and walk and work together a few times. And your work has always been a, an enormous inspiration to me. One of the things that I've, I've noticed when I've worshipped at Christ Church uh, in Vancouver is the holiness of the liturgy and the celebrations that are there. And as we all know, in this institute, music plays a big role in holiness and music, which is um, sincerely and faithfully offered 
can bring a great deal of comfort and inspiration to people. And that's always been what I've received from your work, Rupert, uh, whether it's actually worshiping in person, whether it's accompanying your choir on the organ while you've conducted it, whether it's listening to your ensembles kind of from afar, whether it's tuning into your service of Compline, or whether it's the great joy it, it, it brings me to accompany, conduct, prepare, teach, or even listen to any of your compositions. It's, as I say, just enormously rewarding and nourishing for me to be able to say thank you in the guise of this piece for what your ministry has meant to so many people, to me personally, but hundreds and hundreds and potentially thousands more besides. And I chose Psalm 84, or at least a paraphrase of Psalm 84. I, I took the text from four different places. I tried to borrow from several of these so that it sounded like poetry from the perspective of the lyrics. Um, it had a timelessness about it, but at the same time, there was an accessibility about it. And so I tried to draw all of those elements uh, into the psalm translation that I chose to use. And the other thing I would say about the words and maybe the musical aesthetic is Candlemas uh, is, if I had to rank my top three, you know, liturgical year festivals, Candlemas would, it would be circling in the top three, like, it might be third one year, it might be first the next year. And there's so much, you know, really groovy music that's written for that event. And when you study the Festival of Candlemas and how it's been celebrated in different parts of the world and, and, and so on, and all of it to proclaim uh, the divinity of Jesus, the presence of Jesus, and the faithfulness of Jesus, you know, as, you know, the, as Simeon, proclaimed at the time uh, and it's such a nourishing part of the christian story uh, and of course the psalm is the psalm appointed for that event and uh, all three of us here and all the attendees of this conference spend a lot of our time uh, in god's temple and uh, we we wouldn't be there as often as we were uh, or are if it wasn't their favorite place to be. And I think the psalm speaks to that so poetically and effectively. So all of that went into the composition of the piece and, and it's, um, it's a great joy for me to offer that as a gift uh, of, uh, of sincere thanks for the richness and vitality of, of your ministry, Rupert. Yes, so this, what we are going to hear tonight is a little bit of a rarity. This piece was composed and has never been sung by a live choir. So the voices of uh, choristers from across the country, students attending the Institute this year, choristers of Rupert's from Vancouver, choristers of Matthew from Ottawa, and uh, some choristers of mine here in Toronto, all brought their voices together through the magic of audio and video editing and uh, so this is a world premiere virtual choir video, but we are very hopeful that this beautiful work receives many performances live uh, in the future as well. Uh, Rupert, I just wanted to mention, uh, we are, as I said, really looking forward to having you join us in Whitby as our choral instructor for our 53rd session in 2022. Uh, and you and I have been talking about this uh, possibility for many years and uh, we're quite excited first of all to welcome you to us uh, this evening and uh, second of all to have you join us next year Great. yes i i uh i i laugh every time <laughs> when i first heard from you and you wanted to make this award happen finally this year i just i chuckled how many times that you <laughs> make this happen and i just uh want to underline how uh, I appreciate your patience. <laughs> you hung in, in here and uh, actually made it happen this year. So thank you so much. <laughs> well, it will certainly have been worth the wait. Here then in honor of Rupert's joining SICM as its seventh fellow is Matthew Larkin playing his own organ accompaniment at St. George's Anglican Church in Oshawa and choristers from Toronto, Ottawa, 
the SICM community, and of course, we're delighted Rupert's Choristers from Christchurch Cathedral in Vancouver.
thank you, Hillary, for your leadership and friendship to the Summer Institute of Church Music in many past years. Before we join the magnificent choir, orchestra, and congregation of First Pilgrim Church in Lincoln, Nebraska, a few thank yous. The Board of Director gratefully thanks all who have worked to make our second all-online session of the Summer Institute of Church Music into a success, especially our faculty, choral instructor Hilary Appelstadt, organ instructor Matthew Larkin, chaplain the Reverend Wanda Stride, Minister of Trinity United Church in Brighton, Ontario, and Betty Prees and Marg Van Herk Paradis of Credence and Company and the members of the Toronto Uniting Voices Collective. Thanks to our students for turning out online for the second year now from across Canada. Audio video support this year has been by Eric Harrison, Matthew Bauta, and me, Chris Dawes. And a very special thank you to our many donors and sponsors, especially Church Organs of Ontario and owner Jan van der Stadt, which, by the way, you could visit online at churchorgans.ca. The Summer Institute of Church Music is a registered non-profit charitable corporation relying totally on registration fees, charitable donations, and sponsorship partners. So please consider learning more and supporting SICM by visiting us at sicm.ca. Or find us for direct donation on canadahelps.org. This virtual concert will be available for summer viewing on the Summer Institute of Church Music YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to, on our Facebook page, where you can follow us, or you can find it all through our website, again, sicm.ca. To close then, let's sing O God Beyond All Praising, text by Michael Perry, tune Thaxted by Gustav Holst. You'll see the text on screen for verses 1 and 3. Wherever you are, please join in singing along with Canada's church musical community. We have struggled to sing God's song in recent months by reason of isolation, uncertainty, sometimes even sickness and despair. But God is bringing God's world through the 2020-2021 COVID-19 pandemic, and we pray that 2022 will see us, and perhaps you, back at the 53rd session of the Summer Institute of Church Music, July 3rd to July 8th in Whitby, Ontario, and for the first time concurrently in the SICM West Campus of Edmonton, Alberta. Thank you for joining us, and God bless.